Early. It's the only time I have to paint. That is so good. You always say that. Because it is. Well, you have to start showing your work again. And you always say that. I'm not ready. And you always say that. Any word on the audition? Nothing yet. Well, it's only been one day. 45 minutes till your econ class. Morning, sis. Do I smell bacon? You need an A on that test. And I'll get one. All right, you smell bacon. Now eat up. We don't have a lot of time. Past you. Allie, I thought we paid these. We did. We just doesn't pay these. Why didn't you tell us? She's protecting us, which you don't have to do anymore. Look, we'll dig our way out of this. We always do. With my tips and Christmas bonus. And mine. I'll take an extra shift. We're the Evans, right? We're the Evans. Yeah. So, you can still get the call. I guess. <laughs> I'm moving you two to the VIP floor. What happened to Sarah and Liz? They no longer work here. Need I remind you, no eye contact and no speaking unless spoken to. We'll be invisible, Mrs. Hinden. How long have you worked here? Nine months. Although it feels like ten. Follow your sister's lead. She knows how to be a maid. I know how to be a maid. That might be the worst compliment ever. <laughs> VIP floor, and we get to clean it. All right, we'll start at that end and finish the presidential suite. Ladies. Sir? Sound? Morning, Fergus. It would appear that your guests had quite a party. Yes. Seemed like some of them were never going to leave. You know, Max, it's good to see you cutting loose a bit. Oh, don't get used to it. We're heading home. <laughs> what does my day look like? Let me guess. Back-to-back -back meetings, greetings and eatings. You have a breakfast with the charity board, a post-breakfast with the foundation, and then overnight in London for the children's hospice. Unfortunately, with your permission, you'll have to spend a day without me. What for? Yet another governess has quit. It's only been two days. Long days, apparently. And with the Christmas gala coming up, it looks like I'll have to hire one here. Good idea. New Yorkers are impervious to pain. 
Make sure the housekeeping get a generous tip. Yes, of course. survived worse. Um, uh, let me make it up to you. Um, do you like chocolate? These are really good. Um, soap? Uh, not that you need it. Um, Thanks. I don't suppose I could interest you in a complimentary sewing kit. You can never have enough of those. Yeah, if you lose a button or your pants split unexpectedly. <clears throat> I'm a maid. Need I say more? Yes! I got the audition! Great! No, it's in an hour. Forget it. It's just the chorus. Go, I'll finish up. I can't ask you to do that. It's a couple more sweets. I got this. Thanks, sis. <laughs> I owe you one. <laughs> I'll add it to the list. <laughs> Break a leg! <laughs> Housekeeping. Seriously. Your car's ready, sir. I think I've left my watch in the room. Your father's watch. I'll get it for you, sir. Why hasn't this been done? I mean, the room is still a mess. I'm sorry. I need another 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. Leslie Millicent Carroll has been waiting downstairs for nearly half an hour. Do you know who she is? Someone with three first names? Oh, she writes the hotel review for The Times. And she asked for an early check-in. I'm sorry. Leave your keys. You can pick up your check downstairs. You're firing me? A week before Christmas? No. I'm firing you and your sister a week before Christmas. Here. Someone left a watch on the dresser. I just feel terrible. This is all my fault. We'll get something else. <laughs> During the holidays, we'll figure it out. Hey, sis. This is Mr. Fergus McDuffin. Fergus will suffice. If this is about all the overdue bills. I beg your pardon. He's a butler from uh, Winshire. We're a sovereign nation near Luxembourg. My employer is aware of your untimely dismissal from the hotel. In the spirit of Christmas and for returning his watch, he'd like to give you this. $5,000? Thank you. But as much as we could use this, we can't accept. Uh, yes, we can. It's too much. But thank you anyway. Well, I have to say, I find that quite... Um, Ridiculous. Admirable. <laughs> Forgive me for asking, but um, is that mulligan stew I smell? You know it? Know it. <laughs> Everything in the kitchen. Plus, plus peas. peas. <laughs> so, so I haven't had it since I was a boy. Would you like to join us for dinner? Mm. So, what do you think? Mm. Even better than I remember. <laughs> Allie can make cardboard taste good. <laughs> and we have... Your parents raised you well. Oh, actually, they passed away when we were young. Oh, sorry. Allie raised us. She dropped out of art school to come home. And I'm still raising you, even though you're both adults. It's very noble. Oh, you have no idea. These two were holy terrors. Hey! <laughs> you know, I have an idea. Perhaps you'd accept this check as two weeks' wages for a job in Wincher. 
You want me to go to Europe to clean someone's house? Well, I wouldn't call it a house, and you wouldn't be cleaning it. A governess unexpectedly left. As it happens, I'm looking for a fill-in over the holidays. A governess? Like Mary Poppins? Yes, but without the umbrella and bottomless bag. <laughs> You'd be in charge of one little girl. But I'm a total stranger. Mm, not exactly. 31, never married, not in a current relationship, dwindling bank balance. Former employment, uh, sales clerk, waitress, dog walker. You had me checked out? I'm afraid I wouldn't be here otherwise. You see, the family is very prominent and very discreet. You'll be flown first class, of course, and have your own apartments and ladies' maid. <laughs> She'll take it. Lisa, this morning you were a maid, and now you'll have one. You'll be stuck here forever. It'll be an adventure. But it's Christmas. We'll do Christmas in January. Uh, what? Uh, I... We could use the money. Can I just have the night to think about it? Of course. And if your answer is yes, I'll send a car for you in the morning. Thank you. Well, thank you again for a delicious and most unexpected dinner. Oh. Good, Good night. night. Good night. So? Shire is beautiful. That it is. Would it be fair to say that you've never traveled abroad? Does Staten Island count? Here it is. It's like a castle. <laughs> it's because it is a castle. It's been in the family for three centuries. What kind of family is this? A royal one. You'll be looking after Princess Theodora, the daughter of King Maximilian III of Windsor. And you're just telling me this now? Discretion is of the utmost importance. The palace wouldn't want it getting out that they're employing yet another governess. How many have there been? Let's say that Princess can be a bit of a handful. That many, huh? What a warm greeting. Yes. Tragically, it's not for you. Uh, the service entrance, please, Thomas. Yes, sir. I've... Yeah. I'm... This way. Ladies. This is Miss Evans, our new governess. Mrs. Claiborne, our cook, and Miss Wick, our head housekeeper. She'll show you to your quarters. Welcome, Miss Evans. Allie, please. We use formalities here, Miss Evans. Sorry. Hi. Carter, take the new governess's bags to her room. Yes, ma'am. Follow me. I'm sure you'll want to change into something more appropriate. It's like a museum. Ooh. Don't <laughs> touch anything. Sorry. We adhere to a strict schedule, especially during Christmas. Are you familiar with court protocol? I watch Downton Abbey. Fergus will give you a schedule. And I'll have your uniform sent up. You won't see much of His Royal Highness, and I can almost guarantee you won't see you. These are your quarters. This is all mine. I wouldn't get too attached. Chances are you won't make it to Christmas. Fergus. Welcome home, Your Highness. Thank you, Chancellor. Where's Theodora? I'm sure she'll be here in a moment. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, you better run! 
Princess Theodora, is that any way to welcome your new governess? <clears throat> Hello, Father. Theodora? I asked you to give her a cheque, not a job. She wouldn't take it. Why not? I believe she considered it a handout. I realize that she's not the conventional choice, but then again, we haven't had much luck with convention. You've always trusted my decisions, Max. Why don't I feel that same trust right now? I can't imagine. Uh, Fergus, a moment, please. Certainly, Chancellor. I uh, trust you had an enjoyable holiday. It's hardly a holiday. Your hotel bill says otherwise. I, I don't need to remind you that your popularity is down, as well as our finances. I suppose that's what happens when no one in the family's had a job for a thousand years. Your father had no time for frivolity. Yes, I remember. Well, now that you're back, might I suggest that we focus on Christmas Eve? The gala would be the perfect opportunity for an announcement. I'm not ready. So that's the way it's going to be, huh? This is so weird. I could have sworn I heard somebody knocking on my door. So weird. Hmm. Boo! Hey! <laughs> Thanks for the snake. I've given it some thought, and I've decided I don't need a governess. Well, I don't blame you. Lucky for you, I'm not a real governess. What are you? A New Yorker. Well, I don't need one of those either. Are you sure about that? That snowball toss out there was pretty weak. Pretty weak? You almost missed me. Could you do better? With both hands behind my back. Prove it. No hands through the door. What's going on? Uh, this is awkward. I am so sorry. Meet my new governess, Father. Yes, we all saw her yelling from the window. Again, that was more of a misunderstanding. I believe we bumped into each other in New York. <sighs> Alison Evans, Allie. His Highness is not in the habit of shaking hands. You may as well send her packing now. Save us all the tedious getting to know one another. Off to your room, Theodora. Miss Evans. Not to make excuses, but you are my first king. Mm. Yes, I believe that's quite apparent. I'm afraid Theodora's behavior is my fault, Miss Evans. My royal duties preclude me from spending much time parenting her. As they should, Your Highness, if I may. The princess is a rebellious child who prides herself on terrorizing those in authority. We've all tried, without success, to understand her behavior. Well, she is ten. She's a princess and is expected to act like one at all times. Is that clear? With all due respect, sir, childhood is a short season. If you try and make her grow up too fast, she just might do it. Miss Evans, are you trying to get fired? No one's being fired, Chancellor. 
Miss Evans, you will supervise Theodora to all royal events, but kindly stay in the background. In other words, be invisible. Somehow I doubt you're the invisible type. That'll be all. Man. Chancellor Riggs, advisor to the throne. I suggest you stay in his good books. Is he always so... Insufferable? I was going to use another word. <laughs> I'll have supper sent to your room. I'm not eating with everyone else? The governesses usually keep to themselves. We're looking at his picture right now. I cannot believe that is the same guy you hit with the maid cart. Oh, nice driving, sis. He's not a guy. He's a king. And I also hit him with a Christmas ornament. So it's going well, then. Not to mention the little girl. She's exactly like you guys were. Oh, no. Nice. Good luck. Oh, gotta go. Come in. Your supper. Oh, th thank you. Uh, we don't tip here. Gotcha. Sorry. What's for dinner? Hi. Oh. face. I think I know. Talking to my horse? No. Uh, I mean, yeah, yes. Just, just small talk. I do it all the time. In fact, he likes it. Don't you, boy? <laughs> it's a trick we've been working on. It's the first smile I've seen since I got here. Well, I should get back to my overly large room. You know, it's not often people speak their mind around here. Sorry. Don't be. I'm not going to try to curtsy again, if that's OK. Good night, Miss Evans. <laughs> you like it, don't you? I see you survived your first night. It's only been one night. I remember when I first started here, the king was just a boy, rushing around, causing trouble, you know, in a good way. It was always the fun royal. But then fate stepped in. Thank you. What happened to Theodora's mother? She took ill. It was a long battle. And soon after, he lost his father in a riding accident. It was dreadful. I mean, poor Maximilian. He suddenly found himself thrust into the role of widower and king. And all before his 30th birthday. I don't think he's let anyone or anything in since. Good morning, Theodora. 
is still here. Yeah, I don't scare off that easily. I suppose this is when you start trying to turn me into a little princess. I don't have nearly enough time to do that. Besides, when I was your age, the last thing I wanted to be was a princess. What did you want to be? An artist. Then why didn't you? You weren't good enough. Something like that. So, what do you want to do? You're letting me decide. Hmm. It's your castle. Do you like this one? Yeah, he looks kind of like you. You're not afraid of bugs? <laughs> Are you kidding? New York has the toughest cockroaches in the world. My last governess was scared of bugs. She also said I was annoying. All kids are annoying at their job. How old are you? How old do you think I am? 60. Close. 31. Are you married? Nope. No one ever asked? Oh, someone asked once. In sixth grade. Are you an old maid? Well, I'm a maid. I mean, I was a maid. Well, I mean, I was, I was fired. I, not anymore. Are you here just because you want to marry my father? A lot of women do. That's why they're nice to me. Well, you can rest assured. If I'm nice, it's because I like you. And I'm more likely to marry Santa Claus than your father. Santa Claus is already married. As he should be. This is a great greenhouse. It was my mother's. People say I look a lot like her. You must miss her a lot. I guess. You know, I lost my mom, too. And my dad. Back home, when things get tough, my brother and sister and I put our hands together and we say, we're the Evans. It makes us feel like we can get through anything. So, are the Evans special? We're just a regular family. Do you think we should put a few in Miss Wick's bed? <laughs> this one looks like an Ellie to me. Is that about <laughs> Oh, there you are. Theodora is late for the Christmas photograph. What? I left a schedule under your door. I didn't get any schedule. Hmm. She'll be ready in five minutes. Make it four. Let's go. Hurry. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, let's go. Off the jacket. Miss Theodora, at last. Fergus will show you to your Apologies. place. Uh, Miss Evans. Mm. Let's go, Miss Can I sit in the chair with you, Father? Not this time. Right. I suppose we can airbrush her jeans from the final photograph. A little closer in. Ready. And... So, how many will be in attendance at the Christmas Gala? A few more than last year. Hmm. The Count of Ashbury, I assume. With his new wife. You mean his second new wife? Or is it his third? Hard to keep track. <laughs> <laughs> Father's taking me ice skating tomorrow. Just the two of us. Aren't you, Father? I'm afraid that'll have to wait. Theodora. The day after tomorrow? Perhaps after the holidays. Oh, it is quite a yes. Fantastic. 
Did you just put that back on that plate? It was under three seconds. Excuse me? Oh, uh, the, the three-second rule. If it drops on the floor, but you pick it up within three seconds, it's still good? I, I take it you don't have that rule. When I was at university, we had the three-minute rule. My roommate barely made that. <laughs> in fact, a toast. If there is Christmas in your heart, then there is most definitely Christmas in the air. Here, here. Perhaps you'd like to add a toast of your own, Miss Evans. Oh, it's considered unlucky to toast without a glass. Fergus, would you get a glass for Miss Evans, please? And one for yourself. Straight away, Your Highness. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas to those who've seen us at our best and at our worst and can't tell the difference. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Well said, Miss Evans. Good morning, Fergus. Good morning. Perfect timing. Your schedule. Oh. Holiday tea in the blue room, followed by the nativity scene unveiling, the royal charity Christmas visit, and a late supper in the gold room. And that's just for today? It is, it is. As you can see, preparations are underway for the Christmas Eve gala. It's a time-honored tradition. Nothing has changed in the last 300 years. Not even the guest list? <laughs> If they're still standing, they'll be here. You won't be attending, of course, but you will be in the background in case a problem occurs. I'm very much hoping it won't. Ah, here comes the tree. Carter, put it down at the far end, will you? Straight down there. Yes, in front of the mirror. Can me and Miss Evans decorate the tree? Well, the royal decorator is in charge of the tree. He's scheduled in tomorrow. We could get a head start. Please. I suppose you could put up a few things, at least until Miss Wick takes them down. That's it. Straight up there in front of the mirror. The ornaments are locked up, but I know where the key is. Or we could make our own. Why would we want to do that? Come with me. This old lace looks great. And so do those pine cones. Yeah, a little gold paint and some ribbon. Voila. I challenge any royal decorator to outdo this. <laughs> My mum used to decorate the tree with me. Mine too. I'm starting to forget what she was like. You know what I do when I feel like that? I think hard about one memory, like the last time we were together. When was that? Christmas, a lot of years ago. We were opening presents, and we all sang, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, which is a pretty twisted song. And I couldn't stop laughing. That's what I think about. And it all comes back. Have you come to a decision? Yes. I'm postponing it indefinitely. Maximilian, you've had four years to grieve. A royal wedding will strengthen the country. Lady Celia's family is a crucial link to our relations with the northern provinces. I'm sure we can find another link whose chain isn't attached to an arranged marriage. She's beautiful, 
She's educated and she's royal. She's perfect in every way. Exactly. And you have history together. Had you not run off to school in America and met someone else, we wouldn't be... But I did. I like Celia. But I don't love her and I'm not sure that I ever will. Wincher needs a queen. Not to mention Theodora could use a mother figure. May I remind you, your duty is to your country, not to your heart. Where have I heard that before? Your father was a great king. So I've been told. Ready? One, two, three, go! Oh! <laughs> oh. But darling, do you think of this? Beautiful. Oh, thank you, darling. I know what we can use for the top of the tree. I'll be right back. Okay. Miss Evans. <laughs> What exactly is going on here? Decorating? Apparently. How about this for the top of the tree? Is that your father's crown? His Royal Highness will not be happy. Thank you. <laughs> here, here. I'm a butterfly. <laughs> Wait, I want to be one too. Now, Dasher, now, Dancer, now, Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. And to be continued. Decorations perhaps absolutely wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Superb, superb. I hope you don't have I've ordered enough uh, vintage champagne. Well, it? Mm -hmm. Mind if I join you guys? It's not customary for the governess to eat with staff. Uh, I think that's up to Fergus, don't you? Ah, I see no harm in one more. Thanks. Here we are. I'll try not to eat too much. Trust me. With Mrs. Claiborne's kidney pie, you won't. I think that's your second piece, isn't it, Fergus? Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be okay. Fergus tells me you make a delicious mulligan stew. Oh, yes. I had more than one portion of that. <laughs> Would you like to give me the recipe tomorrow? I'd love to. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. <laughs> I thought Theodora should have her star. And it's too high up, Miss Wick, to take down. Unless she flies up on her broom. <laughs> Good point. I know you talk to horses. Do you ride them? A few times. Around Central Park. This park's a little bigger. And quieter. Thanks. You know, you can only see so much from the back of a limo. You can see everything from the seat of a horse. You ride every night? It's the only time when I really feel like myself. I think that's why I love New York so much. Nobody knows me there. I can stand in line, get shouted at by taxi drivers. <laughs> that's what you want? You'd be surprised what you want when you can't have it. <laughs> we should swap lives. I stand in line and get yelled at on a daily basis. You know, I met my wife in New York. Her family was as royal and stuffy as mine, but she wasn't. We eloped. Vegas? Niagara Falls. <laughs> My father would have disowned me if he could. He was a much better king than he was a father. I probably shouldn't say this. No, please. Play it. Do you ever feel like maybe you've become a little like him? 
I'm afraid I might be going down the same path. Paths change all the time. Not in my world. Fergus tells me you're an artist. Oh, he saw a few paintings at my house, that's all. That's not how he described them. I had a show once, a couple years back. Didn't go so well. So, now I just paint for myself. Well, that's a shame. I'd really like to see your work. So would he. Where are your manners? There's an artist in our presence. <laughs> you taught him that? <laughs> He's taught me a few things, too. It's so beautiful. Yes, it is. <laughs> thank you for the royal treatment. <laughs> well, thank you for treating me like a normal person. I'm not sure that's an even exchange. Oh, trust me, it is. <laughs> I'd shake your hand, but I know you don't shake. <laughs> Good night, Your Highness. Max, please. Uh, I uh, should probably... Good night, Ellie. Good night. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes. Lady Celia is arriving tomorrow. Make sure her room is ready. But she's not due until Christmas Eve. There's been a small change of plan. Good morning, Mrs. Claiborne. Gingerbread cookies. Good morning, dear. And how was the rest of your evening? Just another night in the castle. It's funny, I, I can't remember the last time the king took anyone riding. On second thoughts, yes, I can. Never. Is that gingerbread? Uh, it's not for breakfast. Good morning, Theodora. I saw you and father riding last night. Next time, don't hold on to the saddle horn. Thank you. Should there be a next time, I won't. Morning, Your Highness. Morning, Fergus. Chancellor, your breakfast. Changing, not only green when summer's here, but also when it's cold and drear. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, such pleasure do you bring me. <laughs> what wonderful acoustics in here! Not the original German. A Christmas song is a Christmas song. A royal car has arrived, Your Highness. We're we expecting someone. It's not on the schedule. Oh, that must be Lady Celia. I thought she wasn't arriving until the day of the ball. I invited her a few days early. After all, she'll be family soon. That's not your decision. Someone has to make one. The monarchy needs a queen. Announcing Lady Celia of Luxembourg. Maximilian, isn't this all just wonderful? 
Words cannot describe it. <laughs> Theodora, I haven't seen you since you were tiny. No, you saw me three months ago. Under Easter and last year at the Christmas Gala. <laughs> I suppose I should remember these things. But I did remember this. Thank you. I'll open it on Christmas. Oh, no, open it now, dear. I can't wait to see it on you. Uh. <laughs> Ballet, my favourite thing. Oh, and you're just the right age to start lessons. You are going to make an adorable ballerina. Lady Celia, this is Miss Evans, my governess. Nice to meet you, Lady Celia. An American governess. How odd. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Now let's all move to the drawing room, shall we, Your Highness? Who is she? The horrible lady my father's supposed to marry. Hmm. What better place to announce it than the Christmas gala? Hmm? How perfect. I vote for a spring wedding. Of what year? Aren't you silly? This year, of course. <laughs> we'll send the invitations out on the first. Absolutely. That way it gives anyone who counts plenty of time to clear their schedule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the wedding is being held at the castle, I assume. Mm. Just as Maximilian's father's was. And perhaps the uh, honeymoon in the Maldives? Mm. You're planning my honeymoon, too. Our honeymoon. And I adore the Maldives. <laughs> Unless, of course, you prefer somewhere else. No, not really. Father, you don't look too well. Maybe you should go to bed. I'll take you. I'm fine, Theodora. It is getting late. You must be very tired, Theodora. <laughs> oh, I never sleep. In fact, if you were to get married, you'd never be alone together, because I'd always be there, day and night. Theodora. But I have questions for Lady Celia. Questions? Do you like bugs? As long as they're in the ground, I suppose. Do you know how to make ornaments out of pine cones or mulligan stew? Theodora, that's enough. Are you being nice to me just because you want to marry my father? Uh, Do you even love my father? Theodora! Teddy. Excuse me. Your Highness. Uh, let the governess handle it. Your Highness. Theodora? Theodora, come out this minute. <sighs> She's locked it from the outside. You're not going to hit me with that, are you? I'm going to break a window, Your Highness. It's still Max. <sighs> don't believe everything you're thinking. You don't know what I'm thinking. But I'm the jerk who wanted to kiss you when I'm meant to be getting married? So you do know what I'm thinking. Can I at least explain? There's nothing to explain. This union was arranged by the throne. Aren't you the throne? No, I just sit on it. Apparently the monarchy's only popular when we're getting married or having babies. Celia and I were meant to be married years ago. But we see each other occasionally. It's just always been assumed that we'd be together. You make a beautiful couple. And I hope that you'll be happy. It's Becky. Sorry. Inside, Theodora. You're not going to punish me? No. Hmm. Hello, everyone, and welcome again. It's hard to believe another year has gone by. I hope it's been a good one for all of you. There are rumours of a royal wedding. 
father always told me not to believe rumors. <laughs> I tell my daughter many things, most of which she ignores. <laughs> Theodora, would you please hang a royal ornament on the tree? I'll hang this one instead. That's right. A picture, Your Highness. Look at us, just like a family already. Don't worry, Miss Wick, I didn't make the bed. It's not Miss Wick. May I come in? Of course. What a surprise. To what do I owe the pleasure of this unexpected visit? You and Maximilian seem rather chummy. Well, we do go way back. Five days ago. I'm just the governess. I owe you an apology, Miss Evans. I'm afraid I'm quite insecure when it comes to Maximilian. We were supposed to be married years ago. This is my second chance, and I'd hate for him to slip away again. You have nothing to worry about from me. The truth is, I don't believe he's ever been quite comfortable as a royal or a king. Perhaps you could put a good word in with Theodora for me. Of course. I'm glad we had this chat. Where's Theodora? I don't know, Your Highness. I'll go and find her. <laughs> oh, good one! <laughs> yes! Princess Theodora, you're due in for breakfast. Oh, you cheeky little monkey! Pardon the interruption, Your Highness, but I can't seem to find the staff anywhere. And my tea's cold. Bring on the... Is this a snowball fight or a tea party? <laughs> Something needs to be done about this governess. I think we'll make this a new Christmas Eve tradition. Well done, girls. Ooh, these look delicious. <laughs> hot. Can we make more? <laughs> sure. But this time, you're going to do the measuring. 
All right, we need one and three quarters cup sugar, but the one cup is being used. So we'll use seven quarters cups because four quarters is the same as one. Is that like fractions? I don't get all this math stuff. Oh, it's easy. It's just different ways of saying the same thing. So one cookie is the same as two halves, which is the same as four quarters. See? That is pretty easy. So if I add two quarters, that makes a half. Yes. And if I add one more quarter, that makes three quarters. And just one more quarter makes a whole. You got it. If I add another three quarters, that would make... Okay, that's enough math, you little sugar monster. <laughs> it's almost dinner time. A toast to the future of winter. To us. Miss Evans and I made Christmas cookies. Who wants one? I do. Mmm. Delicious. Don't you want one, Lady Celia? <laughs> of course I do. <clears throat> Miss Evans' family recipe. Is there no end to your talents? There most definitely is. Hmm? Well, you certainly have a way with children. Thank you. Well, perhaps you have some advice for Maximilian and I. After all, we do plan on having a few of our own, don't we? <laughs> I doubt I have much to add. Miss Evans says that you should never yell at a child. If you're angry, just lean in and whisper quietly. It's scarier. <laughs> that was more of a joke. <laughs> Miss Evans says that good parenting lies somewhere between don't do that and what the heck. All right, Theodore, I think we get the picture. Oh, no, do. Please go on. This is fascinating. <laughs> Miss Evans? Well, I, um, I guess if I had advice, it would be... Always kiss your children goodnight, even if they're asleep. Well, I think it's safe to say that Miss Evans will be very hard to replace. Fortunately, she won't be replaced. The door won't be needing a governess after the holidays. Really? Oh, you didn't tell her. Tell me what? Your father and I have been discussing your enrollment at Le Rosy. You're sending me to boarding school. Nothing's been decided yet. Theodora! I asked you not to say anything. We can't keep replacing She's governesses. Only ten. You were only eight. I went to Switzerland when I was Theodora's age. It is a wonderful training ground for young ladies. And we can always visit, and she'll come home on the holidays. I lost my mum. Now I'm losing my father. To her. You won't lose him, Teddy. They're sending me away. He's going to forget all about me. He won't. You are pretty darn unforgettable. No matter how it seems right now, I promise you, you are his crowning achievement. I know this is hard, but you can get through anything. Just like the Evans, right? <sighs> right. Your Highness? Another Christmas Eve, another Gola. Mm. Uh, this one will prove unforgettable, I'm sure. Uh, I think Lady Celia would be quite happy with this. It's my mother's ring. And she would have wanted it on Celia's hand. It belonged on the hand of Theodora's mother. Well, if you'd had a royal wedding instead of eloped, it would have been. But let's look to the future, Maximilian. Believe me, I'm trying. I can assure you. It's the right thing to do.
happy Christmas Eve. How's the king? About to announce his engagement. He's proposing? To Lady Celia of Luxembourg. What? When did this happen? Apparently, before they were born. I'm sorry. It's okay. Gotta go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. My mum used to brush my hair. I think I'll use that as my special memory. Okay. Tiara or no tiara? No tiara. All right, tiara it is. You look just like a princess. You've always been honest with me, Fergus. I have, yes. Am I doing the right thing here? You're doing what's right for your country, Max. And what your father would have wanted. That's not an answer. And I'm afraid this is one time when I am unable to be honest with you, Your Highness. Maybe you could give Lady Celia another chance. I know you don't like her, but hey, you didn't like me at first either. Sometimes people can surprise you. But why can't you be my mother? Well, first of all, I'd have to marry your father. And we both know that's impossible. Why is it impossible? He's better when he's around you. He's himself. Theodora, are you ready? She is. You look so much like your mother. I'm sorry, Father. Why would you be sorry? I know you don't like being reminded of her. Theodore. It's her memory. You. It keeps me going. But you never talk about her. That doesn't mean I don't think about her. Every single day. Theodora, we can talk about her whenever you want. My father taught me to keep everything inside. But I don't think we'll be doing that anymore. Shall I take Theodore to the ballroom? I think I'll do it. Father, may I invite Miss Evans? She's never been to a ball. Thank you, sweetie, but I really don't belong there. I disagree. I'll see you downstairs. You're an invited guest. What are you doing in the corner? Hoping to get uninvited? Well, you do no such thing. Royals make an entrance, and you're going to, too. Ah, Your Highness. You look lovely. Just like a queen, Lady Celia. Thank you, Theodora. And you look every bit the princess. Shall we? If you don't mind, I'd like to walk Theodora in. Chancellor, would you escort Lady Celia? It would be my honor. Lady Celia? Are you ready? Who's is it? Oh, I was young once. I wore it to a very special dance with a very handsome man years ago. It's beautiful. Oh, my mother was a seamstress. She spent months making it. 
but I, I can't possibly. You can, and you will. Thank you, Mrs. Claiborne. It's Helen. Allie. Go on, hurry up and put it on before the ball is over. So, what happened to that very handsome man? Oh, we were far too young, I'm afraid. He was in the army and he was sent away. And we just lost touch. You never saw him again? Oh, yes, I saw him. But by then I was married and, and my husband passed. So too much time. Anyway, at my age, thoughts of romance are about as unlikely as an eclipse of the moon. You do realize there are several eclipses every year. Announcing His Royal Highness King Maximilian and the Princess Theodora. May I have the first dance? She really is rather beautiful. She's very sweet. Yes. Announcing Miss Alison Evans of Brooklyn. Brooklyn? I've never heard of her. What's she doing? She's a governess. Not tonight. So much for being invisible. Dance with me. May I have Lady Celia for a dance? Of course, Captain. It seems you're the only one who hasn't danced yet. Fergus hasn't. I think I'd rather dance with you. Your judgment is obviously impaired. It has been for some time.
I'll definitely remember this for the rest of my life. So will I. May I borrow him back, Miss Evans? Of course. She looks quite beautiful in your dress. She looks lovely. As did you once, I recall. I'm not blind. Celia. I know you don't love me. At least not like you used to. And I'm okay with that for now. Because I think one day you will. And that's enough for you. We're going to have a wonderful marriage. Please, just give us a chance. Now, let's take a peek at that ring. Isn't it bad luck to see it before the proposal? I'll take the risk. That's strange. Where is it? Well, when did you last see it? Early this evening, my study. Well, I hate to state the obvious. I trust my staff implicitly. They've been with me for years. Not all of them. Well, Miss Wick came from your staff. Well, I'm not talking about Miss Wick. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Is it? She's not a thief. I know you're fond of her, but what do you really know about her? <clears throat> Excuse me, Your Highness. A few pictures with the Duke and Duchess. That'd be good for relations. Let us hear it. Mm. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Lady Sylvia, could I have a word between bites? Of course. It appears my engagement ring is missing. Really? That's awful. Yes, I thought you might be able to shed some light on the situation before it escalates any further. Me? No. I have no light to shed. Because there will be a room search. And if it's found amongst your things, the authorities will be called. What are you trying to say? I think it's clear. Be clearer. Well, last week you were a maid. Now you're a governess. Where will this dazzling climb up the lad land? A 19-carat diamond can buy a whole new life. I have a life. <laughs> Do you? Look, I might be a lot of things, but I've never taken anything in my life. She doesn't steal. She's an Evans. Thank you, Teddy. But I think... It might be best if I just leave. You can't. We have another week. <clears throat> I think under the circumstances, Miss Evans, leaving now would be best. Excuse me. father to put it on her finger. I know. I'm sorry. I'll tell them it was me and you can stay. I can't stay, sweetie. I've caused enough trouble as it is. What's going on? The ring's been found. So I see. I'm sorry, father. Do me a favor. Tell them it was me. It's important that Theodora and Lady Celia get off to a good start. It was found on my dresser where I left it. I'll pack my bags. You don't have to do that. I'm pretty sure I do. Promise we'll stay in touch. I promise. And you can come visit me any time your dad lets you. They're waiting for us downstairs, Theodore. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. Making me feel like a princess. Even if just for a little while. 
Thomas will drive you to the inn when you're ready. Thank you, Fergus. I'm sorry. I've always prided myself on being a good judge of character. I was right to hire you, and I'd do it again. Would you hand these out? Oh, you shouldn't have. I never dreamed that halfway around the world I'd make such good friends. I'm going to miss you. This is normally when I would make my traditional night before Christmas speech, which you've no doubt memorized by now. But tonight, I would like to say something else. Christmas is a time to come together. It's about family, giving, and love. And recently, I've come to realize that while I am your king, first and foremost, I am a parent. I know this realm needs a queen. But right now, my daughter needs a father. I know many of you were expecting a wedding announcement, and I hope that one day soon you'll have that. But not tonight. I'm sorry. Merry Christmas, everyone. Enjoy the ball. Celia, please, wait. No, I have waited long enough for you. Listen. You deserve more than an arrangement. We both do. I really am very sorry. I hope one day we can get past this. Oh, well, I can assure you we won't. And frankly, I'm relieved I have to spend the rest of my life with that child. That child is my daughter. And unlike you, one day she will be queen. Do you have any idea what you've just done? Yes, I do. This is my house, my family. Who I marry and when is my decision. Your father will be so disappointed. I can live with that. And if you can't, you can leave. <sighs> I love you, Father. <laughs> I love you, Teddy. And you're not going to boarding school. You're going to stay right here with me. Holidays, they come and go. Life is so uncertain. That's what I want you to know. I wish we had more time. Don't want to leave again. Why can't our story be a story with a happy end? You're always in my heart. Life is sometimes like a song. You sing the words you're feeling. You feel this sometimes wrong. Cause every time I go, my soul wants me to stay. Show me in every moment. It's wrong to go away You're always in my heart I couldn't believe it's true It's always, always been you And all of my dreams come true I have found my
I think you strayed from your path a little. My path's changed. It turns out I couldn't marry someone I didn't love. You didn't propose? No. I'm in love with someone else. But what about a throne? It survived a thousand years. It can survive a girl from Brooklyn. Are you sure about this? The fact is, you have me at sewing kit. love a romantic horseback ride. I hope you enjoyed Crown for Christmas as much as I did. Hallmark Channel's Five Nights, Five New Movies Thanksgiving event continues tomorrow night with my movie, A Christmas Detour, at 8. I can't wait for you to see it. See you back here tomorrow night as the countdown to Christmas continues on Hallmark Channel. Happy Thanksgiving weekend, everybody.